guys, welcome to back to another Gimpy's Gal Guesses. Now this is one I think two guesses back, so two videos ago that I was in. Um, I actually was looking at this one while I was filming whatever I was filming and I was like, hey, this game is in this little um, pamphlet. Maybe, I don't know if he wants me to guess it or not and he did. He wanted me to film it if I had a chance at that time, but he did not tell me to. So I mentioned this one before. I think I even said the name of it in a few back. I'm not sure if I said the name, but I was looking at it in that video. So now I'm here to do a guesses on it. So it is a, a historic one editions game. It is called Indian Wars. Oh, uh, Gears Indianus. Oh, maybe that's just in a different language, Indian War, maybe. Uh, Custer, and then it says Little Bighorn. Han Singer Bluff and Washita. It says it's a solitaire war game, so we know going in it's a solitaire automatically. There's the front of it, pretty cool um, artwork there. Definitely takes you back to those times. Back has an uh, example of gameplay. It does list the contents. It says uh, three maps, one pre-cut counter, so I guess one sheet, one rule book, one scenarios booklet and one die. Now this says, I think, what is that? Is that French? Yeah, French and American. So I guess this is translated in French and English and that's why it has all those different words. Like this is in French and this is in English. Um, it's a complexity of four out of 10 for 12 and up. Again, it's a solitaire game, so only one player. Um, and it takes 60 to 180 minutes to play. Um, yeah, so that's the box. So I'm gonna flip her over and open it up. I think he said this one would be a quick one because there's just not a lot to it. There was very few components. There's only one die. So here's that one black six-sided die. And then we have one sheet of counters. Voila. We have one rule book, one scenarios book. We have some baggies to put some of the counters in, I'm guessing. And then we have one, two, three maps, and then like two player 80 looking things. So let's just dig through this. First, I'm gonna do the counters because they feel like they're gonna pop out. I don't wanna pop them out. All right, so here's the counter sheet. So we have people, some men on horses. This looks very similar to, I go, I'm gonna have to go back and look because it's gonna drive me crazy. I don't remember the name of the game, but there was a game I guessed like two, two Gimpy's Gal guesses ago, two videos ago, two of me doing this ago, and these counters look almost identical to that from my memory, but my memory's fogged because I'm pregnant and I have the worst pregnancy brain ever. Like, it's bad. It's so real for me. But this is giving me whatever that game's vibe was, and I can't remember if this is like a, just made by the same company, if it's like a, a spinoff, if it's like a an expansion of that game. I don't think so. I think this is its own standalone game, but I think it's in the same kind of family and that's why it looks so similar. So we have men on horses. We have like horses, like cowboy on a horse and some Indians um, or Native Americans. Don't want to be offensive. Uh, we have hostels, it looks like, on horseback. Um, some more Native American or Indians uh, on horseback and some standing. And then we have some teepees. And then we have some, uh, looks like, the other side fighting and some empty US boxes, maybe mail or something, I don't know. But that's, those are the counters, not a whole lot, but I'll just give you a quick little peek of them. And then the back, all these are blank and these are different, but some are, are blank, but I'll just, again, Gimpy will get into all of these if he does a video on it. So that's not what, this is not for the details, it's just for fun. All right. Then we have one, two, three maps. So the three maps are made from like card socks, so be careful opening them. I have learned from my mistake, fellas. Please don't come for me. If you were here back when that happened, I know a lot of you have not forgiven me yet, but I promise you it's never happened again, so I should be forgiven at this point. You don't know what I'm talking about. Go back and watch all the Gimpy's Gal guesses, but there's one where I rip a map and it keeps ripping and it doesn't matter what I do. It was the way it was folded and the material, it was already weakened. And so every time I like touched it or moved it, it just, and I was like, no, he's going to kill me. But so that's one of the maps. And then we have, these are huge. I really thought these were booklets at first. These are huge and there's so many of them. This one says so deep. <gasps> Oh, 
It was just a little tiny right there. I'm sorry. Oh no. I feel like a little shamed puppy dog now. It's, I'm telling you, it's like a puzzle. Oh my god, this one is not my friend. I just want to cry. I am not doing anything to mess this up. I am trying, and it literally was like folded in a bubble, and then when I tried to fold it in the right way, it just and ripped. Um, yeah, so a lot of people did not let me live that down, and they kept commenting about it, and like, oh my gosh, she ripped it, but it really was out of my control. So ever since then, I am super duper overly extra ridiculously careful with maps that are made like that, and this one is so careful. Um, this one says a little bighorn. Uh, zone and accessible. Then we have a turntable over here, one through 10. You can see that, I'll kind of slide it. So here's the turntable, it says little bighorn. Has some different places here, like a river kind of running up through the middle. Um, and yeah, this just looks like a map. These are all the little, I guess, movement. If you move, maybe one box is a movement, I don't know, but there's some teepees. There is nothing on the back, so it's just one side of it. That is the little bighorn map. We'll see if there's different names on the other ones, but there's three maps. So there's one, or there's the first. Then we have the Hans Hansinger Bluff, which is this little smaller. It's just a single right here. Um, and then Big Hill, one, two, three up here. We have the Yellowstone River here, another turn tracker. And then again, some more places like Indians Retreat, Indian Woods, Indian Scouts, Custer's Wood, and then some like wooded areas and open plain areas. But here is the Hansinger Bluff map. That's the second map. And then the third map looks like another big one. Be very careful. This is a long one instead of a wide one. This is Washita, which sounds like Wakita from Twister, but it's not. Um, we have a turntable again, and then different places listed, a little river, some wooded areas, open. Um, it says those little green, the green coloring means that it's an inaccessible zone. So that's inaccessible. It says the same thing on all of them. So that color means that, but yeah, that is the third map. So there's three maps. Um, I think there was a scenario book with this one, wasn't there? Here's the turn sequence. So this is solitary, so we only need one. So turn, turn sequence is here, that says Custer. And this says articles of clarification, so that's nice. It's like, if the turn sequence or the rule book doesn't really break it down enough for you, you get this little articles of clarification that kind of says, hey, these things might be confusing, let me straighten them out for you. So I like that, that's really cool. So there is the articles of clarification front and back. Hopefully that's in frame. And then that's just pure paper, so extra careful with that. Then we have rules and yes, scenarios. So the rule book is only 11, 12 pages long, so that's not bad. Uh, on the back, it looks like we have our markers and counters kind of broken down. And then we have, yeah, setting up the game, a description of the material, US, uh, US counters, hostile markers. Looks like it just kind of breaks that down a little more. But yeah, that is the rule book. Extended example of play, so it shows you Washita, whatever map you're going to be playing on based on which scenario you choose, I guess. Kind of breaks it down, some examples of it, and then the counters on the back. So that's the rule book. And then the last piece of this smaller game puzzle is the scenarios booklet. So this one is, so over here, Washita, like some history on it, and then the setup and the play of it, like who's involved, what map, what pieces you need. Um, then we have the Hansinger Bluff one. So yeah, I guess there's one scenario for each map, I think. Unless I'm wrong, yeah, set up. And then Little Bighorn. And then Indian Wars Heroes of the Plane. This is just some like history things right here. That's just pretty cool, it looks like a newspaper. But yeah, so it looks like there's one scenario for each map. Um, so that makes it easy to know what you're doing because it's if you pick the one for Washita, that's the map you play on, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but that's it, another shorter one because there wasn't a whole lot in the box, um, but I'm sure I could never figure out how to actually play this, but we know that it is uh, Cus General Custer, that would have been what? Civil War. Um, yeah, Civil War, so it's in America. Uh, it's Little Bighorn, Hansinger Bluff, and Washita, that's when, or that's where. Um, in the 1800s, is that right? I'm so horrible at history, please do not quote me on that, but that's what this is, it's another, 
Uh, so it's a solitaire, but it's another battle game. So you're going to be battling the other side. I don't know if you can pick who you play as and then the solitaire just runs the other one or if you automatically play as one side and the other side is automatically the auto ran side. Um, but this one looks pretty straightforward. Again, not a whole lot of pieces. Doesn't mean that it's easy to learn or easy to master. It just means it's not a hard one for me to guess because there's not a lot for me to dig through. So another short one, but nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you wanna see more about these games, make sure you are subscribed and have your notifications turned on so that when Gimpy uploads these and films these, you know and you can check them out. Let him know if you enjoy them. Please thumbs up the videos. That's the best way for us to know what you like and what you're enjoying. Um, and that's how we know what to put up. So I hope you guys are doing well with, with the state of everything. The election is coming up. I hope everybody stays safe. I hope you go out and vote. Vote, vote, vote. Go out and vote. I'm telling you, we went out and voted um, like a week ago. And quite honestly, the line was not long at all. Um, a friend of mine went and voted today. She said the line wasn't long at all today either. So go pick a good time. Go vote. It's super important. Um, it's your right. Go out and exercise it and stay safe with everything that's going on. Love people. Live every day like it's your last and just just be positive and put positivity and happiness and love out into the world. And hopefully that's what we'll get back. But this year has been crap. I think we could all probably agree on that. So hopefully the rest of this year can go a little smoother than it has thus far. But um, I'm not holding my breath for it. So please stay safe out there. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And we will see you guys in the next Gimpy Scott Guesses. Bye! Mwah! Baby, baby, it's a baby girl. By the way, I have picked her name out because um, Gimpy just, I don't think he cares at this point. Uh, I've picked out the name Everly Jane. Um, Jane would be after my grandmother. And I just think it's very country and cute. And it goes with my other girls' names who their middle names are Rain and Lane. So I think it's cute because each of their middle names is Rain, Lane, and Jane. It goes cute. It's a cute name. It's, it has meaning behind it. So let Gibby know that he should just let me pick the name unless he has something that he's like super into, but I got it. All right.